I'm Larry Walther and this is PrinciplesofAccounting.com Chapter 2. In this particular module we will be looking at the trial balance. Now the trial balance is not a formal financial statement. It is merely a listing of the ledger accounts along with their respective debit or credit balances. It's primarily used as a self-check to determine that debits equal credits at any particular point in time. In an automated accounting system, a trial balance may not even be necessary, although one could be printed off. The trial balance here for this particular company shows all of the accounts that are in use by the company along with their respective balance. Notice in particular that total debits equal total credits. This is not the same as total assets or total expenses or total revenues or total equities. It's merely all of the debits and all of the credits summarized. The trial balance is a very useful tool to determine if errors have occurred. If the trial balance is not in balance, then certainly something has gone wrong and it's necessary to go back and look at the recording of the individual transactions and how they were posted to the ledger accounts. Even if a trial balance is in balance, there's still a possibility that there might be some particular error. For example, if a transaction failed to be recorded, or if a transaction were recorded twice, or if a transaction was posted to the wrong ledger account, debits might still equal credits, yet the trial balance would be in balance. So while it's a good self-check, it's not an absolute assurance that no errors in the accounting system. The trial balance can lead to the preparation of financial statements. Basically, amounts are transferred from the general ledger account to the trial balance, and from that trial balance, financial statements might be prepared. We're going to see in Chapter 3 additional adjustments that might be necessary following the preparation of a trial balance. But for now, let's simply assume that there are no adjustments that are necessary. So again, reviewing, we have the general ledger. And remember the general ledger, the amounts that are in the general ledger are the result of posting from a general journal. The transactions and events are posted from the journal into the ledger. The balances in the general ledger are then used to prepare the trial balance, and the trial balance is the takeoff point for preparing financial statements or reports. Uh, those financial statements, here's an example for this particular company, would consist of the income statement, the statement of retained earnings, and the balance sheet. Those amounts that are highlighted are the amounts that were found in the trial balance for the particular company. The revenues and expenses are listed on the income statement, the assets and liabilities and capital stock account are listed on the balance sheet. Uh, notice that revenues minus expenses, the net income, the net income is not a trial balance amount. It's simply the amount that results by subtracting expenses from revenues. And the net income, in addition to appearing in the income statement, as you can see, also is carried down into the statement of retained earnings. Subtracting any dividends for the period, which there were none in this particular case, gives us an ending retained earnings amount for this company. And that ending retained earnings amount also appears in the balance sheet causing the balance sheet to balance. And so basically what we now know is the trial balance is primarily a tool to check for the equality of debits and credits prior to the actual preparation of financial statements.